Today I'm back to review The Walking Dead Season 4, Episode 4, Title Indifference. I will go in as review, and I will not hold no, board, no bars towards Rick Grimes' hypocritical ass. So if you don't want to hear none of my bad cursing, yeah, that's right, I'm mad. I don't like what he did to Carol. Now, what Carol did was wrong. That was very wrong for what she did. But, like I say, he's a fucking hypocrite. And I'm going to tell you why he's a hypocrite. Because, oh, he tells Carol, I fear that you, he basically sums it up, he tells her, I feel that you're a danger. In, in which makes sense. Unpredictable people, in general, is the most dangerous people. Because unpredictable people, you don't know what they're going to do next. Now, a straight out evil motherfucker, you're going to be like, well, we know he's evil, so we, he's predictable. He or she is predictable. But an unpredictable person is the most scariest person to me. And I can see where he was coming from. At some point, you can see the fear of his eyes when he was looking at Cap. But let's take it back to previous seasons. Season 2 and, yeah, Season 3. Let's talk about these seasons, and I want to break down his his, his hypocritical ass thoughts in his in his review. Okay, like I say, he's telling Carol, well, well, you know what? You can't be around the group because uh, Tyrese he might try to hurt you. And from and from what one standpoint, that makes sense. That's another reason why I kind of agree with him letting Carol go on her own because he was trying to protect her overall because he was admitting that he was going to tell Tyrese what she had did. So that from from a logical standpoint, that makes sense. I can see see why he some I can see somewhat why he told her to leave and go on her own, but the rest of that shit is just bullshit. Now he's telling her well. You're going to have to go because let's just say if me and you come back and the rest of them don't make it. And uh, I don't want you around my son and I don't want you around my daughter. But in season two, you had unstable Shane Watson around your wife, which he was fucking. And he thought the baby she was pregnant for was for him at the time. Also, you had him around Carl. And then he goes on to say he feels that she's a danger. Motherfucker, Shane was a danger. Shane tried to kill you. He threw a monkey wrench at you when y'all had that fight in that school bus zone. He dropped a motorcycle on your leg. But you still chose to bring him back to the farm after Herschel told you on multiple occasions. Multiple occasions, people, he said, uh, he didn't trust Shane and Shane is unstable. And ain't no telling what ain't no telling what, what Shane is capable of and what Rick does. He tries to talk to Herschel. You know what, Herschel? I'ma talk to him and I'ma see can we get some mutual agreement. But all of a sudden, Kara becomes a danger. Oh, you know what, Kara? Oh, uh, you gotta go. Also, let's talk about the reasonings within this episode itself. Okay, uh. Also, you killed the, Carol, you killed those people in, in cold blood. But she had a reason for doing it. Now, was that reason justified? Hell no, it wasn't justified. But she had a reason. But, oh, in season two, when he talked to Shane, what, in episode seven, he asked Shane, well, Shane, you know what? Did you kill Otis? Yeah, Rick. I killed him, but I had a reason. It, it, it was either me or him. I had to protect Carl. Well, you know what? You get a thumbs up for that, buddy. Because you're my friend, so you can get away with it. But, oh, Carol did something for legitimate reasons, and she, she got to go. But when Shane did it, you thumbed him up, gave him the okay, and still brought his ass back to the farm. When Herschel told you he didn't want him, want him, that he say, Herschel tells him, you and the rest of the group can stay, but Shane, he can't. And that's when Rick trying to talk to him and stuff. I'm going to talk to him, Herschel. But, oh... Shane, Shane killed somebody, and it's all right. And also, the difference between Shane doing it and Carol did it, look what Shane did. Shane shot a man. He shot Otis in the leg and left him there for dead. It had zombies biting through this man's goddamn flesh. Imagine a human being being devoured while they're still alive. At least when Carol did it, Karen didn't have to suffer. And also, why come they didn't show when 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 uh when uh Carol killed David? Why didn't you show that scene? 
But overall, Shane wasn't no better than Carol. Because like I say, Carol had a legitimate reason why she did what she did. Shane had a legitimate reason why he did what he did. But for some reason, oh, Shane got the old thumbs up for what he did. Thanks, Shane. You're amazing, man. Moving on. He tells, like I said, he tells Carol about me. Well, you know, I don't want you around, around the kids. Because you're dangerous. Oh, oh. And like Shane was. Then he goes on to say that he feel that Carol might harm him. Motherfucker, Shane tried to kill you before. Before and you still brought him back. So. That don't make no sense. And then he's another hypocrite because he talks about the, the choices that had to be made. And Carol tells him that she that, that she had to make that choice to kill Karen and David to prevent the flu from going out. And he tells her about the choices where well, you know you didn't have to do that, you know. But uh you son of a bitch, you was going to kill Randall in season two because you felt he was a threat. She felt they was a threat. She killed them. Like I say, she was wrong. For, she was wrong for what she did. And I, and I, and like I said, I'm a bit too. She was fucking wrong. Then she burnt their body up. She deserved to be punished, but not that damn way. Not kicking her out of the group. Motherfucker. In season two. You was going to hang Randall. You was going to kill him. And the only reason Rick didn't kill Randall, Randall was because Carl had, had came in the, in the, in the, um, in the barn, in the barn house. When, when, when Rick had the gun pointed, well, pointed at, uh, at Randall. In season three, when he first met the prisoners, he goes to Lori. Well, you know what, Lori? I'm going to have to kill them. That's that's exactly what the motherfucker said. I'm gonna have to kill them without even getting to know them. I I can see that they did have some signs. Thomas and Thomas did come off as a fucking idiot. He came out. He came out at an idiot. And, and at one point, I did understand Rick about having to um kill those prisoners. But it's like he didn't make no assumption. He just jumped to the gun. Well, you know what, Lord? I'm gonna have to kill them because they are a threat. But oh, now you mad? Now you mad at uh at uh Carol, Karen, because she had killed she had killed them too because she felt they was a threat. But yet you was gonna kill Randall, and the only reason you didn't kill Randall was because Carl bust up in there. So don't be no motherfucking hypocrite here, because that's exactly what he doing. Like I say, Shane did multiple shit to that man, and he still let Shane come back to that. He still let Shane come c come back to that um to Herschel's farm on multiple occasions after Herschel told him he didn't trust Shane. Dale told him I don't trust Shane. Lori told him Shane would do whatever it takes to be with me, even if that means killing you out. So, yeah. Moving on. Bob. Bob is a damn jinx. He's a jinx, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. And at one point, Bob's characterization really starts to come out within this episode because Bob is dealing with a symptom called survivor's guilt. Look it up. Survivor, survivor's guilt does exist within the human race. And survivor's guilt is is something tragic. It's, it's, when, it's when a human being is with... Is with a whole with a whole bunch of people, and those people within that group that that human being is in gets killed. But that human being is the only person to survive. That human being gets a symptom, and it's called survivor's guilt, and it means they always blame themselves about what happened to the group, and they felt like they could have prevented it. And sometimes that leads to suicide. And Bob was able to overcome that by drinking. Was it right? Was it right? Was it right? Was, was it the right choice about him doing it? The way he was going about it, about drinking? No, but that's the only way he could suppress his his symptoms. Was suppress himself from not feeling that type of guilt? Because, like I say, that right there takes help. 
therapist well, therapist. You can get you can get help for, but obviously they don't really have no help. So alcohol is his is his help. That's his help to, to get over that symptom. But survivor's guilt, that is a symptom that does exist within the real world. And I hate the writers didn't have I, I hate that I hate that they, they didn't mention that on the talking did about that symptom. But Bob Stokey is going through that because remember when he was talking to Daryl, he tells Daryl that he would have kept walking when Daryl seen him because he said he was with two groups before he met Daryl and both of them died. And he was in and, and, and out of everybody who died out of those two groups, he always came out the last man standing. And like I say, survivor guilt could make you or break you. It depends on you as the human being. Um, next, I, I, listen, y'all. I, I, I just can't get this shit with Tyrese right. What are they doing with Tyrese, aka Kubo Slice, man? What? How does motherfucker just giving up the wheel to live? When he got a whole sick sister after prison, the man was pulling out, was trying to pull out a zombie when he could have easily killed it. But he's trying to pull out a damn zombie? He, I, don't, I, can I, I, I understand that he's mad. Us as humans, we get mad and we do, sometimes we do unpredictable things. But fuck Tyrese. Kubo Slice, come on, man. You, you're tripping, man. This. You got to make your mind up at first. Your sister Sasha was your will to live, and you had to go get that medicine for her. You get in that car, 19, 20 minutes driving, all of a sudden you just lose the will to live. And I don't blame Tyrese. I blame the writers for that shit. Man, they inconsistent writing like a motherfucker. Also, about Michonne. Didn't Michonne know? They ain't, they ain't no dead to it. Michonne twisted her ankle in episode two. When she had flipped that zombie over, but all of a sudden, Michonne is running through the woods and I, running through the goddamn college like nothing never happened to her. When you twist the ankle, you're going to twist that. You're going to feel that shit for some days. You're going to be walking with a damn limp, probably. She just running through the woods and shit. And by the way, when Michonne looked at Daryl, when Daryl had picked, I, I, I'm assuming it was um a mineral, it was a mineral rock, a mineral rock that Daryl picked up because it was kind of blue. And if you watch, if you watch the Breaking Bad, you know Hank. He he likes to collect minerals, the rocks, different color rocks, and I think that was a mineral rock that that Daryl picked up, and it was kind of like a a light, a see through blue. And when he looked up, and, and when and when Michonne looked at him, she just started smiling. Y'all just don't know. God help me, Lord. And that woman smiled. My heart just stopped beating. That woman denied. The actress who plays Michonne has a fucking beautiful smile, man. She smiled. Man, I just don't know, man. My my heart dropped. I was like, so fucking beautiful, man. And and that, and that little glare, that little glare, that little that little sparkle. She, 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 I mean, she had in her eyes was just. Man, I don't even want to talk about it no more. Deny is <laughs> when she smiles. She's very in. She's very beautiful, even when she don't, man. I love Michelle. Next, Bob and Daryl gets into it. Because it's revealed that Daryl thought that Bob had put some antibiotics in his backpack, but the whole time he looked like some Hennessy, he put some alcohol in it. And Daryl, and at that point, we seen Bob, the backpack was in a big group of zombies. And for some reason, Bob was really risking his own life trying to pull that backpack up. And 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 us as the viewers, we was fooled because we thought it was some medicine. And the whole time it was some damn alcohol, some Hennessy. And then Daryl Red Nick ass got the nerve to try to toss I will beat the shit out of him. Hey man, you don't waste no good ass Hennessy. You need that shit, man. I drink it. Shit, you ain't gonna help it, Tyrese Kubo. Give me a cup of this shit. Uh yeah, and and they get into it. But this is what I don't get. If Bob is a is a is a true alcoholic, as they make him out to be, then why in the fuck would he go in big spot and pick up a bottle of wine and put the shit down? But now in this episode, he see a bottle of Hennessy and he picks it up. I guess Hennessy must taste better than wine. I got to go try him some Hennessy. Bob, thanks, man. I got I got a local liquor store now and I'm gone and give me some Hennessy. I'm gonna say, fuck wine. I want some Hennessy like my boy Bob. So uh, they get into it, and we can see how Daryl's about to toss the bottle, and he stops him. And Bob Stokey really wanted the alcohol because the guy threatens to shoot Daryl. He actually reaches, he actually 
uh, put his hand on his gun handle in front of Daryl, and Daryl gets kind of angry about it because he can't believe this guy, this human being, is willing to go to such a risk just to, well, well just to get a damn, just to get a sip of alcohol. You know shit real when you're about to shoot somebody over a bottle, over a bottle of alcohol. Good damn, Bob. And you see uh, Daryl, and they, and they had they have their altercation, but everything kind of goes smooth from there. And I talk about the survivor's guilt. And at this point, it's revealed that Michonne has given up looking for the governor. And, I, and I'm kind of happy about that. And I, I'm very happy about that because she was dedicating her life to look for him. And, and when Tyrese asked her, basically, what was your purpose of, of looking for him? And she didn't really want to say, but you can tell that she wants revenge because she wants to revenge Andrea's death. It's just point blank period at this point. She wants to revenge, but at this point, she gives up. She gives up looking for him. And now I'm telling you right now, since she gave up looking for him, now he's going to come out. Now she's going to end up probably seeing him again because she actually gave up looking for him. So he's probably going to pop up some 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 way. But uh, next we see Rick and Carol, and we see them meet. Two new survivors. And I know their names, but ain't no point in calling their names because they didn't even survive that damn long. And Rick actually Rick actually gives up one of his very valuable watches that he had since season one. And I was shocked. He didn't give it up, but the, he told the guy to basically use the watch as time to know when two hours come. But one thing got to me, okay, uh, Rick, how if you give him your watch, how how will you know when two hours come if you gave him your watch? That's the watch you use for time. Yeah, I didn't have no other watch until Carol pulled uh Ed watch out. It is her abusive husband husband that used to beat the shit out of him. Uh yeah. So I'm like, come on now, Rick. How you gonna know what time it is when you get the, the boy your watch? And and how the fuck Annie died so fast? Next thing you know, I see a leg with a tattoo on it. Then I see her body just getting devoured. That don't make no sense. Rick gave Annie a gun. Then on top of that, he didn't even go get the gun. When you know you need ammunition, you sitting right there watching those two zombies devour her body. You ain't going to get your gun back. Rick, you know you need that damn ammunition, man. Shit, dude. And it, it didn't make no sense. How she died so fucking easy? She has a damn gun. She know what world she was living in. She knew what zombies was, so it wouldn't make no sense for her just to die that easy. I want to say bed right, but I ain't putting it on them. And the, and the other guy, hey, I ain't telling what happened to him. We ain't even seen him. He might be alive, but hey, anything could happen. And also, Carol revealed that she's a good medic because she was able to pop that guy's arm back, that, guy, that guy's arm back in place. So, Overall, great episode. Rick is a hypocrite. He proved it once again. Cause like I say, when Carol says she had legitimate reasons uh, about what she did and which they was, but some of it didn't make. I, I didn't agree. I didn't agree with what she did. He gets he gets mad at her and he don't agree with it. But yet, but when Shane had left Otis stuff for dead to get eaten by zombies just to save Carl, he okay with that idea because he had a legitimate reason too, and Carol got one too. And also, not to mention, I got to bring this up. Another reason why I think I, I, I think Rick had kicked Carol away. He, he had kicked her away because also I remember in season two when, when the secrets about Otis' death and stuff was being kept, Dale was running around saying the group is broken. And after Dale's death, Dale plays a major influence within this series, even, even till this day with his death. Because after Dale died, you see Rick and the rest of the group at his funeral. And Rick says, Dale said this group is broken, but we're going to prove him wrong. From this day on, he insists that from this day on, we changing. And no more secrets. So that was another code that Dale influenced played a major role with the, well, in terms of Rick's decision um, making when it came to Carol. Because he don't want that group to be in that same vine they was in in season two. He want the group to be good. And, uh, and, and, and to form a group, it takes communication. And he wants to be he wants to he wants to be honest within a group. He wanna uh you know keep it together. So that was another reason. So Dale definitely played a major reason. He wasn't gonna keep Karen's death a secret from Tyrese about who really did it. 
because then he also felt guilty because Tyrese did tell him in episode two, he says, murder is okay in this place. And Rick, like I say, he's changed now. He don't, he don't go for that. So I definitely like what they did with their speech and what they did and made. And it, it definitely opens up Rick eyes. This episode was overall pretty good, but like I say, Rick is a fucking hypocrite. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my quick review. Not even quick, but remember to subscribe, rate, and comment. How about you guys later? And uh, peace.